I was a print journalist and I remember that uh, writing my first uh, piece actually for the Dawn newspaper when I was uh, almost 17 years old and uh, I did uh, investigative journalism and even at 17 I remember the thrill of writing when I was uncovering something and I went undercover in the passport office because I heard that the passport office was selling uh, illegal passports uh, to a number of illegal immigrants and I really wanted to uncover how that sale took place and, and uh, I went in and I um, you know, found out uh, how that happened and I wrote Dawn's review cover story on it. And I remember that uh, when it came out, there was quite an uproar and uh, it, uh, my photograph uh, for a long time was put up uh, inside the passport office. <laughs> and, uh, so it wasn't, exa not exactly for the most, uh, you know, next, the first time I remember going back to the passport office to get my passport, I wondered if it if I was going to get it. But to say that I've... got your passport. I did. To say that <laughs> I've always felt um, that it's important to tell stories and in that process educate people. And uh, I, I think that love came at that young age and then when I went off to college, 9-11 um, happened and I was writing for newspapers in the US and I felt that what I was writing was was one thing, but people wouldn't be able to visualize my part of the world and how best to make that happen. And um, of course, I had no formal training in documentary films. In fact, I still don't have any formal training in documentary film. I uh, decided that I would go off and make a film. And I had just finishing uh, an undergraduate at Smith College in economics and political science. Uh, I wrote uh, a proposal up uh, came to Pakistan in December 2001 and saw that there were a number of Afghan refugee children on the streets uh, of Karachi and I felt it was important to tell their side of the story, you know, hear about the war in Afghanistan through their eyes. And I wrote up this proposal uh, with a friend of mine, uh, Mo Nakvi, and we sent it off to about 80 television channels, production houses, you name it. Some were very polite. I got responses back saying, thank you very much. You are 21. You have a Pakistani passport, have no formal training in films, and you expect us to fund you. But um, I didn't give up. And uh, I one day I found the email address uh, of New York Times Television's um, president online. And I wrote to him. And I said, you know, I'm graduating from college, and I really believe that you need more voices on American television that can tell uh, the stories from our part of the world in our own words. And uh, he wrote back 15 minutes later and invited me to New York and uh, off I went, bought my first suit and I was in New York and I pitched it to them and two weeks later I had money and uh, another two weeks of how to put a camera on and what to do and off I went to Karachi to make my first film. Wow, so that... Was that really the first time you turned on the camera? It was the first time I turned on the camera and you know, um, it didn't turn out so well because I remember sending back tapes after filming for about four weeks and uh, I got this frantic call from uh, my executive producer in New York and she said, it looks beautiful but I can't hear a single thing. <laughs> and so what had happened was that I hadn't really figured out the sound bit yet. <laughs> so, um, and, and so we had to go back and refilm quite a lot of stuff. But it's, oh, it's been a learning curve, you know, I strongly believe that you cannot be taught how to make a film in a class. You need to go out there and you need to be, you know, take your chances. Uh, at 21 you have very little to lose. Yeah. But what, were you, what was your formal training in the to begin with? <laughs> Economics and government. <laughs> and a good Pakistani girl, very good. Um, What's so fascinating, I've seen some of your work, and what's so fascinating to me about it is, is the range of geographies you cover. You go from Iraq and you cover the refugee crisis. And from there you go on to Damascus. You cover the refugees who have moved out of Iraq into Syria. Uh, you go and shoot there. Then you go to Philippines, to Manila. Then you go to Saudi Arabia, you shoot there. Uh, it's quite remarkable. Uh, so what I'd like, we have some of your clips here. 
Uh, it would be really great if you can, you know, show the audience some of your work and uh, sure. run us through it, sure. so that the audience can also. I, I know that more, I know that most of you have not seen any of my work because it's it's hard to find over here. So I thought I'd take you through um, my my journey as a filmmaker through some of the films. So I'm going to show you about five clips, including Saving Face, which has been nominated, uh, because I know most of you here you want to see that. Um, my first film that I did outside of Pakistan was Women of the Holy Kingdom, which is uh, a film I did in Saudi Arabia. And it got me newfound respect for Pakistan, let me tell you. Uh, after spending eight weeks in the kingdom, I absolutely cherished being born in this country. And I It's only relative, yeah. <laughs> because um, I was one of the first people that went into the kingdom to do a documentary film about the emerging women's movement, and um, it was extremely difficult. Uh, we were arrested um, three times. The religious police. One day we were filming out in the street, and I see the religious police walking towards me, towards us, and I had made a conscious decision that I would take an all-female crew to Saudi Arabia. So there was a Dutch, uh, um, half Dutch, half, half American camera woman, blonde, six foot two, uh, a, a Chinese American, um, and myself. So when we, when we kind of walked through the streets, we really did attract attention. So we were filming in Riyadh on a bridge, and I see them, the Mutawa, walking <coughs> towards uh, me and saying, um, stop. And so we, we were shocked, so we stopped, and they said, well, you're attracting too much attention, and so we've decided to arrest you. And I remember, I remember, I remember, I thought my, my Dutch uh, American uh, Julie, she was, she was shocked. She said, huh, what, we're covered, we're fully covered. But I think one of the most incredible experiences in my life, I feel, had been able to go into other countries and look at their culture and look at what's happening there. So I'm going to play a clip from Women of the Holy Kingdom and just to, it's a very short clip, but just to tell you, um, I had gone to meet the producers of a television sh series called Tash Matash in Saudi Arabia. And Tash Matash is a series that uh, picks up often controversial things uh, and turns them into comedy so that uh, it can get people uh, to think about the issues that confront Saudi society. So this particular clip has some clips from Tash Matash and my interview uh, with them, uh, with the two producers.